Okay. Hi, Joel. Hello. Hi, everybody. Uh, welcome to the new What's New in Playwright video. Mm -hmm. This time we have What's New in Playwright 131. Good. So we have some content. So let's jump straight in to the very first topic, which is project dependencies. Okay. But actually, before talking about project dependencies, I yeah. want to talk a little bit about global setup. Mm -hmm. uh, do you use global setup scripts? Yes. So do our clients. Like lots yeah. of them use global setup. It's very convenient. Mm -hmm. uh, they love it, but there is something lacking in global setup scripts. For example, you don't get traces for free like you do for the real tests. Mm -hmm. You don't get HTML report uh, steps for the global setup scripts and uh, you cannot even use page fixture. Mm -hmm. So now I want to build a case for the new feature and we will use this new feature, project dependencies, to build a better global setup experience for you. So stick with me. Okay. So here I will start writing a new a configuration file. It's a playwright config file. Yeah. Okay. And I start with the, including this define config uh, function. Mm -hmm. uh, it's not a big deal. It's just you use it now. It's actually a new thing for this release as well to define config. Easier for typing. So that's how I do the config now. Now, in my better global setup, I will have a separate project. It will be called a setup project. And each test in this project will be a step in my setup routine. Okay, hold on, hold on. Stay here for okay. a second. I, I, I will okay. figure it out. Okay, so I, I put my project. Um, can you say it again? <laughs> okay, so I have a new project. It's called setup. Yeah. It has this specific test match so that I differentiate project between each other. Yeah, okay, so we've got and... login setup, yeah. Yeah, I have login setup.ts, and yeah. each test in this new project mm -hmm. is a step in my setup routine. Okay, so what's what's like the so in my global setup, I just run my build script, um, but it sounds like people are using it to use Playwright to like log in and and set up their users' accounts and their test servers. Yes. Very common use case, exactly. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So now once I have this project. I will have my regular tests and I will use this new keyword called dependencies mm -hmm. to tell that the, my new basic project actually depends on the setup project. Oh, very cool. Okay, I get it. Um, okay, so this is how I get a dependency. So every yeah. time I want to run a test from the basic project, it will now run first test from the setup project. Yeah, okay. So like if code... I have my uh, my setup code can like uh, create my test user. And then when I have my set of tests that need a test user, it'll first run through this uh, test user creation uh, suite. Exactly. And so I know exactly. that's all set up and good before I run my actual tests. Exactly. Uh, and now with this, this is a regular project. So we get yeah. the HTML report support. We have mm -hmm. trace viewer. You have inspector. Yeah. You have all your fixtures. Everything mm -hmm. works. Yeah. Now, Joel, a quiz time. Yeah. So a question for you. So uh -huh. I have three projects. Yeah. Chromium, WebKit, and Firefox. Yes. And they all depend on the setup project. Yes. Now, what will be the order of project execution if I were to run this uh, setup? Which one uh, will be run first? Um, I assume that the setup will be run first. And, Correct. And, then, and, and then, then the Chromium, WebKit, and Firefox. Exactly, in parallel. Well, yeah. this was an easy question. Uh, mm -hmm. Let's move on to a harder question. Okay. Now, I have this kind of setup. I yeah. have browser login and database projects and the single end-to-end -end test project that depends on both of them. Yeah. Um, it's going to run the browser login and the database in parallel. Good. Uh, and but then the it's going to run question, the tests. Right. But the trick question, what happens if the database project actually fails while running? What happens to end-to-end -end test project? Um, it doesn't run. Precisely, uh, you know. Okay, good. Yeah. You got A plus. It's almost like I used to work on this team. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay, nice. So uh, this is a running sequence quiz. Um, mm -hmm. So now you know how things actually behave. And now I want to show you actually and do a demo of how this whole thing works and uh, demonstrate mm -hmm. why this new setup is very beautiful and, and convenient. Mm -hmm. So let me share my screen. Uh, I have my terminal here and I'll jump to the... Uh, VS Code. Is it good enough font or do I need to zoom in a little? 
Um, I don't know if for the users, but for me, it's lagging a little bit. Uh, the font looks good though. Okay. Okay. Let's uh, let's see how it works. Mm -hmm. Okay. So I have a bare bones project here. I just have an empty player config here, and uh, I will do what we did with the project setup. So I'll have uh, projects. And I have a new project that will be called Setup, right? Just to uh, clarify, make sure. So huh? this define config, all it's doing is is it's like when I used to put the type uh, annotation before, right? It, it just yes. passes the object yes. through. So you, you exactly, don't need to yeah. use it, right? Yes, but I okay. get this nice complete yeah, right yeah, away. Yeah, yeah. No, it's very nice. Okay. So I got this my first project, and I will go here, oops, and create my new file, which will be login.setup.ts. Mm -hmm. And I can do test expect from playwright test. But actually, since this is a setup sequence, I can actually alias test the setup so that when I read this code, I know immediately that these are part of setup. Mm -hmm. right? It's a little bit convenience for me. And I can go and do setup here. Mm -hmm. And uh, we will go and log in to actually Wikipedia. OK, we have this green triangle here. Let's hit it. And we go and see our Wikipedia page. Now, since this is a real test, I can go and use record and cursor to generate my login sequence. So we'll go here, I'll put my name here, some password. I will change this password after the video. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I'm going to use the timing to figure out what it was. <laughs> yeah, and we got our test. Mm -hmm. uh, I can actually clean it up a little. I don't need to click to fill, so it's a little bit extra. Mm -hmm. And uh, I want to make sure that I got logged in. So. Let me actually... Oh, I see your password. <laughs> yes, you see my password. I will use pick locator here, and I will make sure that there is... Oh, personal tools, for example. Okay, this should exist only when I'm logged in. So yeah, you use... can also just look for the username. Uh, yes. Yes. Yeah, I could. I'll just use personal button. Good? Mm -hmm. Okay. So... I have this setup sequence that uh, logs me in, and I want to actually sta save the state. So I'll mm -hmm. do, oh. and I do export clone storage state. And it will be dear name, some canonical location, no documentation. Oh, you should, uh, you should use commas instead of backslashes in case you're on Windows. Uh, no, this works actually. It does. Because on Windows, you can actually use these slashes and the file system. It, yeah, that's, it works. Okay. I was always yeah. told that you shouldn't. Yeah, yeah. Turns out you can. Okay. Dimitri owes me an apology. <laughs> okay. So that's how I save the storage state, right? Mm -hmm. And uh, now actually, I'm ready to write my tests and uh, I'll have another project. It will be end to end tests and uh, it will be a dependency to set up. Right? Mm -hmm. Real easy. And there will be end to end spec.ts. And it will should uh, show search for the long user. Now, this test is not logged in because it doesn't use the storage state. So mm -hmm. I need to put here and say storage state, well, the one we've populated in our setup script. And now I can go and say, go to, to Wikipedia. Oh, let me actually extract this to a base URL. So I'll say this is too complicated. I want to have this part of base URL. Mm -hmm. And this is my URL. Now here I can navigate and let's make sure that this is actually getting me to a logged in state. So this is our login sequence. Mm -hmm. And now we are here and I can see that I'm logged in. And now nice. I can actually go and record my test at cursor 
and say that something is you know here. Mm -hmm. Good. So, um, good stuff. Now I want to show you that I can actually run this with trace on. And this will generate an HTML report for me. And inside the HTML report, show you that we have this do login. And this is our sequence to log in. Mm -hmm. And I can, if something doesn't work, I can see it here. And I can go yeah. and debug the trace. And in trace, we see all the things we do, how we click on the buttons. Mm -hmm. And we have the screen recording. And actually, while I'm here, there is a new button which is pop out DOM snapshot, which I can hit and trace viewer, and it shows me this DOM snapshot on a new tab, so I can go and uh, inspect it with the uh, DevTools. Okay, so this isn't Wikipedia, this is just the DOM that we saw from Wikipedia. Yes, yes, this is just a snapshot. Mm -hmm. The artifacts. Cool. Okay, so back to the slides. Is that, that pop out as a new feature from 131? Yes, yes, this is mm. a new feature. I just had an opportunity to show it off. Okay. Good. Um, moving on. Viewport assertion. Next chapter. But before talking about viewport assertion, I want to talk to you about to be visible assertion. Okay. D do you remember this one? Oh, I had a lot of fun with this one. Okay. Then you will be able to tell me. So say, for example, I have these three locators on the, on the page, yeah. and we have these browser window that's looking at the page, right? Viewport. Yeah. If I were to do to be visible for these three elements, what will oh, I don't remember. There? I think that then we'd say yes, they are true. They are true because they don't take into account the viewport. That's right. Yes. Because they could be and scrolled is... to. Exactly. So if I am about to click the oval, yeah. then it will scroll first. So Playwright will actually scroll the viewport first. Yeah. And then point and click. Yeah. I like your animation. So mo oh, thank you. I'm mm -hmm. working hard. Uh, yeah. So most of the time, you don't actually need to be in viewport, the new thing that we are about to show you. Because to be yeah. visible works just fine, and Playwright takes, like, uh, scrolls things into view as it needs it. Yeah. But sometimes you do need, because if you if you want to test some revealing logic of your website, so in this case, you have this new to be in viewport assertion. Okay. And in, this is, this in is like of, it, if it's to make sure that it's above the fold. It's uh, it's above the fold. Yes. At mm -hmm. least some part. If you say to be in viewport, it's some some okay. minuscule it intersects. Amount of it, it's yes. So it do, does intersect with viewport. <laughs> Precisely. Yes. Now, all for example is not in the viewport. Mm -hmm. So you can assert this as well. Mm -hmm. Naturally, yeah. with um, not to be in viewport. Great. Yeah. And uh, there is one more thing I want to show you, and you will explain me what it does. It's a ratio argument. Mm -hmm. What do you think it does? Um, it's the same as like intersection observer, right? So it's checking that it's at least this much in the viewport. You also Smart. put a comment that tells me the answer. <laughs> yes, yes, that was a hint. <laughs> okay, yeah. So if you have this assertion, uh, mm -hmm. then you should. This basically expects that React is at least fifty percent visible in viewport. Yeah. The assertion does itself use, doesn't scroll anything. Does yes. this use intersection observer under the hood? It does. Yes, yes. Okay. It does use intersection okay. observer. So I imagine, I imagine there's a bunch of like complexity of like, do you count padding or not? That people could go to MDN to look up. Yes, yes, it's always based on the spec. So the assertion itself doesn't scroll. It's important. So if you have this assertion, that something else has to scroll. And for example, you can have your trackpad and scroll it manually. And once mm -hmm. you scroll the viewport to the rect, it, it, it succeeds. Yeah. Uh, good. So this was the third topic. And uh, last but not least, we have a bunch of uh, miscellaneous things, mm -hmm. which is the new define config function that you can use to simplify your typing for TypeScript. Yeah. But make sure to do use it to, to use it for component testing because it's absolutely required if you do component testing with Playwright. Um, what will happen if I don't use it for component testing? It will tell you. Please use define config for component <laughs> okay. testing. Okay, it's it's very. You're not going to tell me why. It's just it's very particular. Yeah, yeah. Uh, there is a new max redirects option for route fetch, 
and uh, well, the big one. Uh, we have now support ARM64 for Debian 11. Mm -hmm. Is, is so Max redirects you... where where Max will manually redirect your uh, your requests? <laughs> he gets an email every time. Good joke. He, he could have. Yeah. He could have great discipline. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and last but not least, uh, we now include Node 18 inside the Docker containers everywhere instead of Node 16. Um, for ARM on Debian, uh, so what was the support like before? Was it supporting old versions of Debian or supporting not ARM on Debian? It was not ARM on Debian. So if you want to run the Docker Debian 11 on a new MacBook, Apple Silicon MacBooks, this is not yeah. going to work for you. Well, this now it, it works like a charm. Okay, so now it works. And there's Ubuntu as well? Ubuntu as well, yes. Yeah, cool. Yeah. Okay. Uh, recap. We have a new project dependencies feature that is very useful if you want to have a better global setup experience. We have viewport assertion. And we have a bunch of miscellaneous things such as this define config, Debian ARM64 support, and the node 18 inside the Docker container images. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Joel. Yeah. Good job on quizzes. Mm -hmm. See you next time. Yeah.